How would you respond to someone saying that nihilism is just a cop-out to actually believing a greater meaning to life? Right. Someone who said that would have to believe in, you know, a greater meaning, right? And I don't. What I talk about is the meaning that you can create. So I don't believe there's a meaning that someone else has created for you. I think you've got to create it yourself. So that's very different from saying that life is meaningless. But the point is, don't deceive yourself. Don't deceive yourself into thinking either that there's no meaning in life and you can never have a meaningful life, or into thinking you can only have the meaningful life that the Judeo-Christian God created for you, or the God of Mormonism created for you, or that the ancient authors of Buddhist philosophy created for you. No, the people who wrote Buddhist philosophy were authors. The people who wrote the book of Psalms in the Bible were authors, all right? All authority is just authorship, and you too can be an author. You can be a creative person. You can write your own poetry. You can write your own philosophy. And even if you don't, even if you just take someone else's poetry or someone else's philosophy off the shelf and you decide to conform to it, adhere to it, obey it, believe in it, it's still on you because it was your choice. You chose to believe in it. So any greater meaning in this sense it's still a meaning of your election, your selection, your creation. You just perceive it as if it were greater than yourself because you didn't write it. You didn't reason it through, right? You accepted someone else's authority instead of being an author yourself. You know, not, not everyone has what it takes. Some people are stupid. You know, um, some people are just too stupid and lack the creativity or energy or work ethic to, you know, come up with their own philosophy. So they're going to remain the prisoner of someone else's philosophy. But if you at least have this self-awareness, you'll be aware of the choice you're making. And you'll come to regard those people who wrote that book, whether it's the Bible or the Buddhist canon, as just human beings not so different from yourself who sat down one day and decided to write a story. Hey, I got a great idea for a story. There's a flood and this man built a boat and put some goats in it. Noah's Ark is a story, all right? Buddhist philosophy is a philosophy. The poetry in the book of Psalms is just poetry. It was written by poets. It was written by authors. And you know, you may not have what it takes to write your own philosophy and write your own poetry. But you can recognize that. So no, in this sense, I'm saying to you positively, there's no greater meaning. But there's the meaning you choose. There's the meaning you create. And it's in that way that you have to find your way to a meaningful life. Okay, interesting. So, so yeah, it's not that you don't, it's not that you don't have meaning. It's you're basic. So the, the traditional method is for you to right. pick from one of the many different religions. I feel like you kind of acknowledge this. He's, some, someone named Nemo Senpai is asking about, uh, people who subscribe to something else like a religion and they're still kind of determining their own meaning by sort of picking which aspects of the religion they, you know, a lot of people sort of pick and choose, I feel like, where they're like, yeah, this is my religion, but I don't believe in this part. I think, yeah, I don't even right. really think we need to address that. I think we all kind of... Yeah, yeah, and I, and I sympathize too. I'm going to say I have a human heart. I know what it's like, you know, you still want to have funeral rituals. I get it. So a lot of people still want to celebrate Christmas. I don't. You know, but, you know, I understand people have emotional attachment to these things. They have kind of ceremonial needs, if you like. You know, I, I do have a humor. People want to have a wedding ceremony and they want their grandparents to come to their wedding. So they want to have a wedding that's the same. I get it. But, you know, this kind of cherry picking, it's, it's inevitable and ongoing in, in any case. And so you have to recognize that you're at a minimum recreating the tradition of your grandparents, recreating the tradition you find in the Bible, reinventing it, reinterpreting it, reapplying it. And then as soon as you start to recognize that, you know, you start to pull apart the tapestry and realize, you know, realize what the options are you have for the rest of your, the rest of your life. Do you want to keep saying prayers to a God that doesn't exist? Do you want to literally cut off 60% of, uh, of the nerve endings in your son's penis? performing what's called the circumcision ritual just because there's a book that describes Abraham doing it, you know, allegedly, you know, many thousands of years ago. Is that a good enough reason? And you talk about, before I get the example of like trying to justify Zionism, 
in reference to what happened in Germany in World War II. There's no connection. Okay, there's this ancient book that describes a guy cutting off his son's foreskin, you know, performing the ritual. And, and this justifies what you're doing in your life. How, you know? This is, these are the kinds of unquestioned belief, uh, the kinds of unquestioned beliefs uh, people live with. And sure, I'm saying question everything. And, you know, you might surprise yourself. You might be a more creative, more positive person than, than you think you are. You might, you might lead a more positive life than you, than you think you can. That seems like a good note to end on. Um, so I, 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 there's a lot, a lot of stuff I didn't get a, a chance to get to. <laughs> Wonderful. I know you're keeping a list. I never know what I'm going to get with you, man. All right, great. <laughs> Some of the, not all of these are going to be, the, well, I'm just going to go with whatever's in the chat. Start with an easy one. I mean, I already know the answer, but we got a question. What do you think about pineapple on pizza? <laughs> not even pizza. Uh, yeah, we, we, we've had pizza in the last couple months. We've had pizza a couple times as vegans. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know what? I'm going to give the most authentically nihilistic answer I can, which is this. I have never had... A pineapple pizza that tasted good that doesn't mean it's not out there doesn't mean it doesn't exist right maybe i've yet to maybe i've yet to try a pizza that really makes pineapple work um i can challenge you with this you know corn niblets on pizza like you know corn niblets out of a can in china it's completely standard china thailand they put corn niblets on pizza do, do you think that can work? I can only tell you that I have never had a corn niblet pizza that, that really worked. But maybe it is possible one day. That was a, a much more in-depth answer than I was expecting. Right. I, I take this stuff seriously. <laughs>